lecture video is aimed to analyze theorem 4, corollary 1 and corollary 2 of this section. Theorem 4 says, suppose if we have a vector space V which is spanned by a finite set of vectors beta 1, beta 2, etc, beta m. That means every vector inside this V is a linear combination of this beta 1, beta 2, etc, beta m. Then any independent set of vectors in V is finite and contains no more than m elements. So we have to prove if we take an arbitrary independent set of vectors which is a subset of V that will be finite and the maximum number of elements it can have is m. This is a theorem. Or the statement which we have to prove can be rephrased in such a way that uh, we have to show that every subset S of V which contains more than M vectors is linearly dependent. That is another way of uh, proving the same statement. So what we will do is we will take a subset S of V which contains more than M vectors and we will show that in such a case that will be linearly dependent. So that will uh, give us the proof of this statement too. So we have such a set S, it has more than M vectors, it is a subset of V, okay. And uh, to be specific, we are saying that uh, there, are, there are distinct vectors in S, uh, we are calling it alpha 1, alpha 2, etc, alpha n, where uh, this n is strictly greater than M, okay. And uh, by the hypothesis of the theorem, we know that beta 1, etc, beta m are spanning V. That means there exist scalars a i j in F such that alpha j is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to m a i j beta i. So that will mean that uh, our each alpha i's that is alpha 1 is equal to a11 beta 1 plus a1, a21 beta 2 plus etc plus a m1 beta m. Alpha 2 is equal to a12 beta 1 a plus a22 beta 2 plus etc plus a m2 beta m and so on. And alpha n is like this. So this is the statement uh, which is rephrased like this. So for any n scalars x1, x2, etc, xn, all these scalars are coming from the field of this uh, vector space V and we are taking the linear combination like this x1 alpha 1 plus x2 alpha 2 plus etc plus xn alpha n. We are considering it. That will be equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n xj alpha j. We can represent it like that. And we know that each alpha j is the summation of the guy sitting here. So this is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to n xj, summation i is equal to 1 to m a i j beta i. This summation can be taken out and this xj can be taken in because this xj, xj's and a i j's are scalars. There is no problem to di distribute like that. So you get summation j is equal to 1 to n, summation i is equal to 1 to m, a i j x j beta i. We can uh, take x j like that because scalars commute when we do multiplication, right. So that is equal to, again rephrasing, summation i is equal to 1 to m, summation j is equal to 1 to n, a i j x j beta i. So we reach such a conclusion there and we have a theorem when we are dealing with the matrices in the first chapter chapter which says that if a is an m by n matrix with m strictly less than n then the homogeneous system of linear equation a x is equal to 0 has a non-trivial solution that means there exist scalars x you know that this A is an M by N matrix. That means this capital X will be an N by 1 matrix. 
so there will be n entries there for x so there will be uh, scalars n scalars coming there and such a possibility is asserted in this theorem that is it is exactly happening like that there will exist such scalars so we have this theorem going on as an application here which says that there exist scalars we have the confidence that there exist scalars x1 x2 x etc xn which are not zero it has a non trivial solution that means which uh, which are not all zeros not all zeros such that ax is equal to zero and this is uh, rephrased and written as like this the statement here the statement ax is equal to zero sitting here and the statement the whole statement sitting here both are the same summation j is equal to 1 to n a i j x j is equal to zero where i is varying from 1 to m so here note that the a we are talking about in the theorem which we stated is this one and x will be this one okay so this statement when we started we said for any n scalars x1 x2 x etc x n and now you know that there exist such scalars which has this particular property so we can say that this x1 alpha 1 plus etc plus xn alpha n which is equal to this since we have such scalars if we are choosing those scalars we are talking about now which are coming here you will get that x1 alpha 1 plus x2 alpha 2 plus x extra plus xn alpha n is equal to 0 which is actually nothing but the assertion that the set s which happens to have the scalars alpha 1 extract x extra alpha n is a linearly dependent set so this is the logic behind uh, proving this theorem um, fold which is actually a very important theorem and corollary one is also quickly following from this theorem that is if v is a finite dimensional vector space then any two bases of v have the same finite number of elements this is a very important statement that means whenever we have a vector space v to be having the dimension finite any basis of v that means uh, the basis of v need not be unique uh, a vector space can have more than one basis so they will have the same number of elements uh, to prove that uh, we have uh, v is finite dimensional that means it has a finite basis what is a basis a basis is a linearly independent spanning set for v so call it set beta 1 beta 2 etc beta m and by the earlier theorem which we just proved every basis of v will be finite because we said that what did the theorem 4 say here theorem 4 said that suppose if vector space is spanned by a finite set of vectors then any linear any linearly independent set will be having maximum m elements that's that's what the theorem 4 says so definitely basis is a linearly independent set so if uh, this is a linearly independent set and if there is another basis that linearly independent set will have at most m elements right so thus if another set set alpha 1 etc alpha n is a basis both being linearly independent by theorem 4 we can say n less than or equal to m and similar similarly we can say the reverse part like uh, if this if we are considering set alpha 1 alpha 2 etc alpha n uh, it is a basis we know that it is linearly independent and we know that this is also linearly independent because this is a basis so m will be less than or equal to n so in both cases when we conclude we get m is equal to n this is a very very important uh, aspect uh, 
while dealing with dimension of V, uh, that any basis of V will have the same number of elements. So to officially define what is a dimension, dimension of a finite dimensional vector space is that number of elements in a basis for V. And we know that number of elements of any basis of V will be unique for a particular vector space. So uh, uh, it is a well-defined concept. Okay, and uh, we denote it by DIM V. You can put the braces or without braces. And the corollary two is nothing but a rephrasing of theorem four and all the things we just discussed now. Let V be a vector, uh, vector space and it is finite dimensional. And suppose the dimension of V is equal to N, then any subset of V which contains more than N vectors is linearly dependent. No subset of V which contains fewer than N vectors can span V. So you can uh, think about the statements and how uh, you can logically formulate it that in your mind uh, with respect to theorem 4. And we are concluding today's lecture. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lecture.